Maddie, it's yes. happened. It's what? November. Oh, I know. Ew. Ew. <laughs> the Halloween is, is done. Thanksgiving's done. There's nothing to look forward to. Kid and Christmas. Yeah, but it's... Or whatever winter holiday you celebrate. Yes. Way to be non-denominational. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. We're very progressive in Toronto. <laughs> well, and also, marathon season is almost completely done. It's pretty much cross. It's pretty much cross. Yeah. But you know what? September and October were doozies of running months. And as yeah. much as I love the excitement, I We've felt had like our fill. every day I got to the office and I was like, there aren't enough hours. <laughs> so Very I'm true. kind of okay with it slowing down a bit. And you've been traveling a lot. You were in Sudbury. Yeah. You were in... call that travel. Well, you I... drove 10 hours round trip <laughs> in two days in a snowstorm and your grandfather's pajamas uphill both ways. I think you would call that a lot of travel. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I did wear my grandfather's pajamas. Yeah. Very well, comfortable. Comfy you have travel to be warm. attire. For sure. You have to layer. Yeah. Got mm-hmm. it. Long underwear. But yes, I was in Sudbury. There's so much snow there. There's snow banks. There's snow banks in I Sudbury. I saw pictures. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And kids had to run through it. Kids had to run through it. And the cool thing was that there was a, a, a first layer of snow. And underneath that layer of snow was just a swamp. Right. And after the swamp layer, then you got to the ground. Um, so by the time kids got to the ground, they were kind of like knee deep in muck. Fabulous. Yeah, super cool. Um, last week when you were in the office and we were talking about your trip to Sudbury, I could tell that you can tell that you're no longer racing cross country yourself because you made some comment like, hopefully the weather's cracks. It'll make it so much more entertaining. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like You can tell you're just a true spectator now and not having to actually deal with it yourself. No, no, no. I will never be in, you know, uh, sports underwear in the snow ever again. Fair enough. And I'm really happy about that. Yeah, you know, that that is fair. Mm-hmm. I remember racing Canadian cross country uh, championships. It was probably about seven years ago now, but it was in Guelph and it was minus 15. That was my first ever. Really? And it was so, and you had to have the longest possible pins in your spikes Mm -hmm. because you were basically ice climbing up those hills. It was so crazy. And I I wore long johns. Yeah. See, that was smart. I wore long johns and I wore a hat and I wore these mittens that were so big they kind of looked like uh, oven mitts. Yeah. And uh, it was my first ever national, actually first ever national anything. Nice. Mm -hmm. Way to be really just thrust into it. Yeah. That's true Canadian running. And it's funny because I had just raced the NCAA cross country championships the week before. Mm -hmm. And I mean, Terre Haute, Indiana, which is where it used to be held, does get cold. That's where it's held this year as well. That's true. But I think it was like eight or nine degrees Celsius at NCAs. And then the week later, I sent all my NC, all my Duke friends pictures of me running in bunners and minus 15 in snowbanks. And they're like, Canadians are crazy, which is true. But it also makes us tough. Oh, super tough. The like, like OFSA, we're skipping like eight parts here. No, let's go right into cross country. We'll we'll just talk. We'll just talk about it. it. We'll talk here. Um, OFSA was not necessarily about like, who's the best runner it was who's the toughest runner yeah for sure because when you start and like one step in actually frankly no from the warm-up you're soaked yes you're both soaked and cold all at the same time and the course wasn't particularly spectator friendly like the novice women also changed it from midget to novice kudos yeah um but the novice women you didn't see them like they went into a field Hmm. And just ran away. Right. And then they came out of the forest and into the finishing shoot. You think. (laughs) Yeah. Most of them. Okay. And everyone else you saw one time for about 100 meters. So they were doing a lot of this like by themselves too. That's so hard. People weren't really trekking into the forest again because of the snowstorm. So, you know, everyone was just hanging out at the finish line. Huh. So they were just, it was just like them and and their brains in the snow, which is... And, you know, it's cool. It's cool to see high school kids being that tough and working yeah. that hard. It's also a great equalizer. It's sort of like a la Boston Marathon last year where it was mm-hmm. pouring rain and two degrees. And totally. Most of the top runners just couldn't hack it. Most of the top runners were Canadian. Well, yeah. Okay, most sorry. of the top finishers. Most is an exaggeration. Some. Some. <laughs> but. Higher than they probably would have higher otherwise. Higher than they would have otherwise. Because yeah. we get winter. We sure do. And it started in Sudbury on the weekend. So tell us about what you saw when you were there in the Great White North. I saw some big breakthroughs from Abby U has from Waterloo. Yeah, that's been coming for a while. Yeah. First offset title? First offset title. Ever. 
ever. Awesome. She raced up in, oh, first off, her cross country title. Okay. Not right. race track title. She raced up in grade 10 to help her team. Grade 11, she had injury issues. So she was 12th, I believe. Mm-hmm. And then this year was her first title, which is super exciting. And she made a verbal commitment to Tulsa for the fall. Nice. That's a warmer spot. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, she gets it. She's done with the snow. Yeah, yeah, fair. And then she, what's up next for her? She's running both AOs and nationals. So that is not the last we've heard of Abby U.S. this cross-country season. And she dominated, right? Oh, yeah. There was, like, no one could touch her. What, 50 seconds for the win? Yeah. That's awesome. And it was really funny. Her coach did an interview after and was like, this is the slowest kid I've ever coached. He's like, she's got not a lick of speed, but insane aerobic capacity. (laughs) Like, literally, he was like, I've never coached a slower kid. And I was like... (laughs) I would hate if that was said about me, (laughs) but in this case, it makes sense. Makes it even more impressive. Yeah. She's an aerobic animal. Yeah. Which is what you need to be for cross country. Nice. And in the men's race, Matt Mason from London, coached by the London coach who coaches Lanny Marshall. Dave. Dave Mills. Dave Mills. Coached by Dave Mills. um, Won his first title as well. Nice. So super cool. Always good to do that in your last... Yeah. Like last crack at the distance. 100%. Yeah. And then, so junior races were a little closer, I think, right? They were. They were a lot closer. And with the junior, like with the junior and grade nine kids, like the seniors have like a little bit more of an idea of like they're excited, but like for like Abby and Matt, they were kind of accustomed to winning. Right. Like they're like they're good at running this isn't like their first offsa medal blah 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 yeah um but the younger kids are just like i just went offsa i went offsa that's awesome and they like kind of can't believe it because it feels because like you remember when you're there it feels so all-encompassing i've never been more nervous than no. for offsa i was more way more nervous for offsa than i ever was for nationals oh, as a totally. high schooler people say they're more nervous for offsa than the olympics yeah which is <laughs> bonkers a lot to say you have like a contract and sponsors and an agent to report to and like you've like put on hold like having a baby's having babies and a life and and careers that you can do like there is so much more on the line (laughs) but like offs is scarier it still takes the cake yeah um was this the first year that they had the co-ed para race no, it was it's, not. That's happened they had before. one last year as well. That's I actually a cool don't addition. know when it started. It's a great addition and an important addition, yeah. I believe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Awesome. So you survived Sudbury. Survived Sudbury. And so the high school scene in Ontario is done for the moment. Yes. But the U Sport Championships are six days away, five days away. Something like that. Yeah. Today's Tuesday. They happen Saturday. Um, There's a really cool storyline there. Super cool. I mean, there's a few, there's but there's, a few. there's one guy that we're going to be really watching. Let me tell you Please about do. that. So, Stefan Daniel is a paratriathlete and a Paralympian, and he's one of the best paratriathletes in the world. Won Worlds earlier this year, right? Second. Second. Second at World Championships. But he's insanely good, and he is racing U Sports. On Saturday. He, as an able-bodied as athlete. As an able-bodied athlete. Yeah. He won the Can West Championships outright. And beating the entire Dinos team. Beating the entire like Dinos them, team. Right? Yeah. yeah. Including like Russ Penick, who was third last year at Nationals. Right. And the FISU team, which is the World University Games, will yep. be chosen based on Saturday's results oh, at eSports. Cool. So Steph and Daniel has a chance of becoming, I have to, this is on my to-do list to like go back and check if this has ever happened before. Yeah. But he might make history as one of the first ever athletes to make both an able-bodied national team and a para national team in one year. Wow. And in two different events. In two different events. That's awesome. Pretty freaking cool, eh? Well, and I also love, he's, uh, so I think he's unofficially sponsored by Nike. I don't, he's can a, you have... Can you have a just do it commercial when they don't sponsor yeah, you? Yeah, but I forgot you can actually be sponsored in U Sport, right? By a professional company because you can't in the NCAA at the moment unless you live in California. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, you can. You can because like Gabriella had a Brooks contract. Oh, when that's she right. Ran for U of T. Right. Yeah. So he's got you put that video up on on your write up for that story, and he's got this amazing Nike commercial mm-hmm. where he's like. Don't call me the best para athlete in the world. I want to be the best athlete in the world. I know he's doing it. He's doing it. He's doing it. That's awesome. So he's super impressive. He comes from like a family of total athletes. His brother uh, has cerebral palsy. Oh, and interesting. The, he was on the Canadian Paralympic swim team. Huh. 
uh, his mom was a marathon runner. His dad does Ironman. So yeah, that's that's some yeah, good it's bloodline. Like a pretty, it's a pretty athletic squad. No kidding. Um. So yeah, that's uh, that's very cool storyline to watch. Yep. And do you? So are you calling the dinos for the win? We've been talking about this all season. Yeah, I'm calling the dinos for the men's win. Okay. I'm calling queens for the women's win, unless Laval finally decides to run their full squad. I don't know. They've got people on the roster who have not shown up to races. Are they injured? Who knows. Are they, do they have, you know, other stuff going on? Like one of them's like Anne Marie Camo, and she's oh, yeah. also like a cross country skier. She's right. going to the Olympics for that. Like she's got like this very impressive resume. I don't know how high cross country running ranks. I don't mm. know if she'll actually be there, but if she is, she's very good. Okay. Um, so kind of Laval is a dark horse. And I said this in my prediction full disclosure, I'm very biased. I think U of T, I think U of T is going to podium. Really? If they have a good day, they will. Because I think Lucy is going to win. Okay. Outright. Outright. Got it. Outright going to win. Okay. Um, she beat both McDougal sisters at OU's. Looked pretty darn yeah, good. Yeah. And I don't think anyone's – I don't think anyone's beating those three. That's okay. the podium. McDougal okay. one, McDougal two, Lucia. Got it. Um, Men's? Men's outright winner? Men's you call outright. Him oh, yeah. Jean Simon. Yeah. The man they call Queen. Um, they call him Queen? Yeah, they call him Queen. That's funny. Yeah. Queen, he's also a- Queen st- Gagné, de Gagné. Ah, he's also a steeplechase stud. Yeah, he ran World Standy. Yeah, yeah, which bodes well for cross country. Mm-hmm. The, I can see that. I mean, look at Jen Lalonde. Yeah, steeple, Same, steeplechasers do well on the cross yeah, course. Yeah, because they're, again, they're tough. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so that's taking place this weekend. Check back to runningmagazine.ca for all the coverage. Mm-hmm. You're going to be there in yeah, Kingston yeah, on the course. I'll be, check Instagram first. Yeah, we'll do some. We'll do some fun interviews. Nice. I'm looking forward to it. And Queens, that uh, that course in Kingston, it's harder than it looks. It's so deceptive. It looks like it's relatively flat for a cross country. You're course. running up or down the entire time. Totally. And yeah. switchbacks galore. And those things get muddy. Hairpin turn. Yeah. Ta- and talk about putting in. So I know that on your coach's corner, so mm-hmm. you call it in your newsletter? Yes, I do call it coach's corner. Okay, so Thank you for reading my newsletter, Kate. No problem, Maddie. I, I, it's great. Everyone should read it. I love my newsletter. <laughs> it's your baby. I got to practice and I was like, everyone sign up for my newsletter. <laughs> <laughs> Recruit the masses. Um, coach Steve Boyd gave very specific instructions about like what length pins to put in your spikes, like which ones you should put in the front versus the back. Cause he knows that course so well, obviously it's mm-hmm. his course. So runners well, it's Clive Morgan's course, let's be sorry, real. Sorry. Sorry. Yes, of course. Uh, but he still has intimate knowledge yes, of it. Yes. He does. So if you're racing, you sport, go check out the watch list, the watch list, sorry, uh, colon and XC newsletter. Yeah. Or sorry, a U sports <laughs> newsletter. I don't even know the name of my own newsletter, a U sports newsletter. And the story you're looking for is the ultimate U sports cross country championships predictions. Great. I say definitively, they are the ultimate, <laughs> the ultimate, the ultimate. They are going to be correct. Yeah. Cool. All right. I think that covers it for XC. Yeah, we can move on. But there's going to be a lot more because there's still lots of provincial championships and nationals. nationals. It's going to be great. Yeah. Back to the roads. Oh, yeah. The New York City Marathon. That happened. I think this was the last big marathon weekend of the year. Yeah. New York happened. Yeah. Hamilton happened. You know, because that's in the same category. Yeah, Yeah. that's in the same category of importance. But honestly, for some people, yes. For sure. Let's start with New York. We have a lot to get through. Okay. So... Neither of us was in New York, unfortunately. No. Anne but was, though. Anne was, yeah. We did have a Staff colleague writer there. Anne. Staff mm-hmm. writer Anne. She had a great time. Yeah, it sounds it. It's always fun to go to a race when you're not racing. Oh, you get to best. actually just enjoy being a spectator. Unless it's a race you wanted to race in, in which case That's it's true. the worst. Yeah. But if you're just there supporting someone else, it feels really good. And yeah. then sometimes it makes me think, why don't I just do this all the time? <laughs> right. But <laughs> there will come a time. Not yet. Not, not yet. yet. My okay. day will come. Let's start with the women. Jocelyn freaking Jepko's guy. Debut. Debut. Winner. Beats Mary Katani, queen of New York, four-time champion, was looking to run the course record, was unsuccessful. Unreal. And ended up second yeah. to Jepko's guy. And this is what happens when you have someone doing a debut, is they're untested. And all I mean, you can pull from, so she's the, Jepko's is the world half marathon record holder. So mm-hmm. we know she's got... She's got some and the pedigree. fact that she ran that fast on the New York course in her yeah. marathon debut, she's gonna run like a two eighteen the next time she uh, gives this distance a 
ago. Try. Well, yeah. she only missed the course record by what seven seconds? Mm-hmm. Two twenty-two thirty-eight. I believe so. And she was two. No, the course record. She was, was two twenty-two thirty-eight. Yeah, and the course record was two twenty-two twenty-three. And she won pretty handily. Oh, totally. By almost a minute. Yeah. Over Katani. Yeah. So crazy. They and went through the half really quick too. I know. They meant business. Well, does Linden started uh, dominated? Yeah, she started putting her foot on the gas. Yeah, and uh, kind of was dangling for like 10k, which I thought she must feel amazing. Well, wasn't she trying to get after the course record as well? Yeah. And no, she, the American course record. Which oh, right. Kara Goucher had run yes, at 225. Yes, that's right. So she was only like a minute short of right. the course record. And she just said she died. Yeah. You know, some days you just die. Some days you die, and then you follow it up by giving the best post-race interview. I, I, it's It's got to be the best one-liner of any post-race should we press re- conference. Should we reenact it? Who do you want to be? Oh, well, I obviously want to be Larry. Okay. <laughs> so let's set this up. Okay. So I'm Des Linden, and I'm sitting and there. And I'm Larry. Looking cool as a cucumber after running a 226 marathon yeah. for sixth place, I believe. Uh, yes. And so I'm sitting there with my mic and I'm fielding questions from the crowd. And as you do. As I do. Yeah. And uh, Larry, Larry throws this me. lobs this one at her. At yeah. me. So Des, is tonight a whiskey or a bourbon night? Bourbon is whiskey, Larry. <laughs> and then mic drop. <laughs> everyone laughs at Larry. And, and then he backpedals. And poor Larry was just trying to be relatable and do a good job as a reporter. But Larry clearly doesn't drink whiskey. No. Or bourbon. And didn't do his post-race drink research, which is obviously the most important part when you're yeah. interviewing someone like He should have already like been Linden. drinking at that point. Maybe he was, and that's where the mistake came from. Who knows? But those who know Des Linden, and you've mentioned following her Twitter feed, which we all highly recommend, is a bourbon slash whiskey aficionado. A connoisseur. A connoisseur, as they say. Yeah. Um, and that was just, oh, that was so great. We'll, we'll put a link to it on the write-up for this. It was quite funny. Yeah. Um, okay. A couple other quick results, because she was the top American, Des yeah, was, in the was. field. She was... Hotly pursued, which I know is your favorite new term. Hot pursuit. <laughs> By that was a movie with Sofia Vergara. <laughs> was it? Modern Family Star. <laughs> I like the finger guns. <laughs> it was pretty ridiculous. It sounds it. kind of fun. Um, Kellen Taylor came second by in only three seconds behind Des. As was it that close? Yep. See the two twenty six forty nine was so bad that you wouldn't oh, know right. that. Yeah. Well, you see, the problem, one of the issues with New York is that you have this weird collision of the best runners in the world and the storylines that develop there, but also this like smattering of B-list celebrities. And I have no shame in call. But they I do had, not know half of those celebrities. I'm sorry. I knew all of the Bachelor contestants. Yeah, you would. Tyler from The Bachelor ran a, a four thirty eight. Maddie is blushing and giddy <laughs> right now. A four thirty eight marathon PB. Um, I'm very proud of Tyler. Anyway, he won't be the next Bachelor. It's Pilot Pete. But oh my goodness, <laughs> I don't have words for you right now. We need to get off this train because I'm slowly losing respect for you, and I have a lot of it. So let's not go any further into this. I'm, embar- I'm embarrassing myself. Um, but yeah, so apparently the AB- it was ABC that was covering it. ESPN. ESPN. And you said the coverage was frustrating because you, did, you, you didn't see, see it. You didn't see the race. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway, Kellen Taylor, second American, mm-hmm. ran really well. Um, the two big names we were looking for, Allie Kiefer and both Sarah Hall, out. both dropped. I know. That's sad. I know. It's too bad. I think Allie's having a rough go of it. Sarah yeah. said it was stomach stuff, which happens. So, yeah. You know. And she also ran Berlin recently. She had nothing to prove. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? And then last uh, female in- info that we want to talk about is Sinead Diver. Oh, our master's marathon ladies. Yeah. Killing Irish it. born, Australian. Dwelling. Dwelling. Good word. Thank you. Um, She placed fifth. And she she ran the World Championships 10K just a few weeks ago. I know. And then there's Roberta Groner, who ran the World Championships Marathon. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Holy also smokes. a master's woman. And I would then love to see their recovery there's profile. there's the fourth place woman, Nancy, oh, who was yeah. also a master's runner. That's right. The master's category was, aside from, I believe... The um, 25 to 29 yeah. was the m- probably the most competitive women's age group. The 40 to 44, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
surpassed all the 30 year olds well not all of them but as, as yeah, an yeah. average of an age group it's a trend we've been seeing for a yeah, while yeah masters ladies good job mm-hmm. top canadian woman christy lovig placed 53rd broke three hours way to go we had a whole slew of canadian top athletes. canadian man a former canadian yep. running gripped publishing employee right. dan way 230 good job i know 78th and 230 50 that's an impressive shabby. result mm-hmm. so speaking of the men I had such a hard time saying this. I think I finally nailed it. Hit me. Jeffrey Kamwarwar. Bingo. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. He won. He did win. <laughs> he's going to be really good at the ma- Like, okay, this sounds ridiculous. But he's going to be, like, exceptionally good at the marathon. Yeah. In a few years. Yeah. Like, well, he already will be good at the marathon. Wow. That's a big statement. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Maddie's calling it. You heard it here first. I think, like, f- next it'll be Bekele, who's, like, yep. Kipchoge good. Yeah. And then I'm kind of having like, it's weird to say that because he's definitely been on the scene for a long time. It's yeah. weird that he's like having a resurgence. Like old, yeah, people are calling him old man Bekele. <laughs> and then Banana uh, Man Melvin, old man Bekele. There's all kinds of good uh, nicknames floating around. The internet loves making up nicknames. Um, and yeah, and then I think it'll be Cam Warrer. Well, another one to keep our eye on was surprise third place who oh, yeah. didn't even have elite entry. And the New York Times called him a professional couch surfer. Oh, that's insulting. I know. Because he's not, he he's back and forth from New York all the time. Between oh, New York. Oh, okay. I so get it's not it. that insulting. Okay. He's just back and forth all the time between New York and Ethiopia. Right. Well, he ran 208.38 to place third. No sponsor. No. Got a singlet off the rack. Um, PB, <laughs> paid his own entry. Paid his own entry. PB by five minutes. Didn't start with the elites. Had to catch up. Said when he caught up, he had to slow down because they were going too right. slow. Yeah. Which is. Such a funny statement from a quote unquote non elite. Right. Anyway. Imagine if he hadn't slowed down. He'll uh, know better know. next time. Well, because I, I get it. If I was in the New York City Marathon, I'd paid my own entry and bought right. a singlet off the rack and I was passing Jeffrey Cam War, I'd probably be like, mm, well, and running out of your mind faster than you'd ever run. And in fact, I think he ran, he PB'd almost through the half marathon. Yeah. Like for the half. Yeah. <laughs> And then did it again. And then did it again. Like, I, I wouldn't have passed him either. No, I would have thought, no, well, I get it. Yeah. This ain't right. No. <laughs> well, he's he's figuring it out. Um, Abdi, Abdi, 42 years old. Very cool. Legat's Masters American record. We're going to have a ton of Masters at these Olympic trials and a ton yeah. of Masters, I think, going to the Olympics. But speaking of the Olympics, a little heartbreaking. Only four seconds off Olympic standard. He ran 2.11.34. Oh. But I don't know what's worse, running that or, or like oh, 10 seconds off would almost be somewhat psychologically oh, yeah. easier. Oh, yeah. Anyway. It's kind of better to be sixth than fourth. You right. know? Yeah. Yeah. Almost as exciting on the North American scene. The Hamilton Road to Hope Marathon. The hammer. <laughs> the hammer. There were all kinds of races. In fact, there was one called Hammer the Hammer on Saturday. There were all these like fun races that took place. Uh, I was actually out on course because I got to give a shout out to my pops, Jimbo VB. Jim Van Buskirk. Jim Van Buskirk ran a 130 half marathon. Heck yeah. I know. And it was fun because so. Did you run the whole thing? I did. Did I was his pacer. I banded it. I didn't cross the finish line. Okay, here's how I justify it. I didn't cross the finish line. I did not take a cup of water on the course. I did not take a post-race grab bag. I did not take a medal or a tinfoil blanket. And I cheered people on while I was running. We write so many articles about these bandits. We sit here behind our little computers and we tip, tip, tap away. Judging people like me. how bad it is to bandit. And here we have a bandit in our midst. It's true. Hypocrisy. I I admit, hey, to be fair, I have never once put down a bandit. If if you do it, I'm going to say I did it right. If you do it the way I do it. It's then okay. it's cool to ban yeah, it. because you're not taking anything. And in fact, I would argue, I paced a group of about 10 men behind <laughs> me the whole time. <laughs> I, I had the 10 60-year-olds with I me. I did. And they were thankful. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it was a really great day. But oh my gosh, when they say it's one of the fastest Boston qualifiers, they're not joking. Because, I mean, the half marathon course is fast. Mm-hmm. The full marathon is a little bit less fast because there's some rollers through the first half of it that we don't do in the half marathon. Mm-hmm. But there is a stretch of about 7K that is completely downhill. And I had trouble walking up the stairs in the office yesterday. Yeah, it's true. Kate looked funny yesterday. Oh, it hurt. No, you didn't look funny. Let me rephrase that. I, I did. It's okay. Kate walked funny. I did walk funny. She looked, I always look she funny, looked but I walked normal. funny. She looked normal. She walked funny. Um, so there were lots of great half marathon results, including Leslie Sexton, who won the women's division. She had a rough go of it at 
at Scotia a couple weeks ago. Yeah. She dropped out, I think, shortly after 15K. Mm-hmm. Um, so she ran a 114.34 to win the Road to Hope half. And I think she just probably needed a, to feel good and good for her. Mm-hmm. Victory always feels she great. She had all this fitness, so like you might as yeah. well use it. She probably won a couple bucks. Totally. Yeah. Yep. And then there were some good stories on the full marathon side. Reed Cool said, one of our favorite marathoners, yeah. paced his wife to a 256 in her marathon debut. And she won. And she won. That was really exciting. I know, so fun, eh? Well, and so I wonder, I didn't, of course, watch the full because I was out in the half, but I wonder if Reed, as her pacer, kind of had my situation pacing these guys unofficially because top all top three women... Obviously, his wife won, but the next two, all three of them ran 350 or 256. I know. So they were all within like 10 or 20 seconds of each other. So I kind of have this image that we dragged these ladies. Yeah. That's what, well, like Jeremy went out and watched for a minute and he was like, yeah, Reed's dragging a group of women yeah. <laughs> to a fast time. <laughs> I'm sure they were very appreciative. Yeah. But that was, that was great to see. Okay. We have. Some track news, which I know sounds weird, but I'm going to put it right after road because it's kind of both. It's kind of both. And it's not TTR. No, it's not. No. It's not TTR. So this is a group of people in Holland, Michigan, mm-hmm. 45 people who ran a 200 meter relay. On a track. On a track. On a 400 meter track. To attempt to run under world record pace. No, to run under two hours. Sorry. They want. They were the sub to two run marathon under two relay team hours, which is referred to as a world best. World best, right? Um, and they did and it. They did it by a lot, by over by ten lot. minutes. Looks super fun. It like does. A really fun event. We'll put the video of this up too. But so it's. I think the idea was, even though they ran significantly faster than what Kipchoge ran, they wanted to get a sense of what it would feel like to have to run that pace even for 200 meters at a time, yep. which is fantastic. I mean, we've seen this before. Back in, uh, I forget what year it was, but at the New York City Marathon several years ago, um, the race set up a treadmill in Times Square and had it set to Ryan Hall's pace and had people like strapped into like a bungee suit basically and lowered them onto this treadmill that was going at his pace, which I think was 208 he ran. Yeah. And it was how long can you run at 208 marathon pace? And like these pretty fit, pretty cocky guys would get on there, you know, former football players or you know triathletes and they'd get on there and get they'd get like 500 meters in and they couldn't do it well last year they did it for kipchoge pace like for 201 oh, that's right yeah and noelle montcom a yes, canadian at the expo 400 meter hurdler <laughs> couldn't do it for no, that long. no <laughs> she's very fit she went to the olympics yep. i believe yep. yeah an olympic track athlete <laughs> Yeah, but it go. It, th- that's why I love stuff like this because for the for most people, sub two hours, everyone understands the prestige of that. Mm-hmm. But no one understands. Like we don't even understand you don't get what it. it. No, I did a workout at world record pace. That's once. right, you did. I did repeat K's. Yeah, I think I did three. Yeah, with with, rest. A, with a break. With right. Rest, yeah. So and then I slowed down. So this whole thing came to be because race organizer John Orney of Michigan, um, he's a cyclist and he got hit by a car in May and had to have surgery and he's okay now, but he, I think it was one of these kind of, now I want to do amazing things We're with doing my life. life. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So he organized uh, this 44 person relay team and he, and so runners ran between one and 26 legs, I believe, um, of this 200 meter, again, with rest, mm-hmm. he did 26 of them and he said it just destroyed him. Like 26 times 200 at marathon world record pace on a track in perfect conditions with big rest in between. And it was hard for him to do. Anyway, great job by these people. They ended up running 149.32. So fast. So really they fast. They destroyed they did. the world best time. But I mean, I think more people should do stuff like this. It's, it's super It's fun. cool. Yeah. Finally, on to the trails. We have two pieces of news. The first is quite impressive and the second is really fun so the first is that a canadian she's a dual citizen chessa adsit morris we've talked about her before Mm -hmm. she won the usatf marathon trail championships in moab utah over the weekend congrats chessa yeah so she had been living in canada she moved back to the states to get her phd we've talked about these ultra runners and how they're just like overachievers at life yeah yeah so she moved to california to get her phd at uh, the university of california santa cruz 
and a beautiful s- campus, gorgeous, gorgeous campus. And ever since she moved back in 2016, her goal has been to take a U.S. title. And uh, this course, of course, of this course, of course, in Utah was at elevation. And mm-hmm. so she's been doing a ton of altitude training and preparation. And she just said she had a great day. Um, oh, also, the course apparently was very, very sandy. Ew. And so that would slow you down significantly. Also kind of gross me out. I know, yeah, and you'd be hacking it up for. I mean, talk about track hack. This would be like sand hack, and you're sweaty and you're sandy, and it's all sticking. So Mm. she won in three hours and forty minutes. Mm -hmm. She won by fourteen minutes, (laughs) which is a fairly impressive margin of victory. Um, And she credits small lifetime. It really is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's longer than either of us running our races. Mm Sort of. Put together. I wish I could actually run a 14-minute 5K. Maybe one day. Maybe one day. Anyway, she credits uh, gravel biking and cyclocross training to her ability to handle the sand. Shout out to our sister publication. Yeah. Go check out the Canadian cycling magazine, the CCM. We should have her on their their pod. On their pod. We'll give a little shout out to Matt Piero. Yeah. And then finally, okay, we talked about fast pieces of fruit and fast vegetables at STWM. (laughs) Banana Man Melvin and the other 14 Guinness World Records that went down that day. Anyway, this was not a particularly fast piece of fruit. Actually, is a pumpkin a fruit or a vegetable? I don't know. I don't know either. In any case, Jim Walmsley, you know, one of the best trail runners in the world, was beaten by a four-year-old over the weekend. So this event is, it takes place in Flagstaff where he lives and it's called the Dewelloween Monster Dash and it's a one mile race mm-hmm. and Jim Walmsley dressed up as a pumpkin and ran it in this like huge puffy, in fact, our trail writer Tori Schultz said that he waddled to the finish line in a pumpkin suit and the deal was anyone who could beat Jim Walms, Jim, pumpkin Jim Walmsley, what, Banana Man Melvin, pum, Pumpkin Man Jim, pumpkin man will Jim. come up with something. Anyone who could beat pumpkin. Jimkin. Jim Kin, oh Maddie, well done. Thank you. That was instantaneous cleverness. Anyone who could beat Jim Kin, <laughs> Jim Kin Walmsley, won free ice cream at the finish line. And one of the people that beat him was Steph Rothstein and Ben Bruce's son Hudson. Four year old Hudson cracked eleven minutes in his first ever mile to beat P- J- Jim Kin Walmsley and get his free ice cream. That's pretty cute. It's adorable. So lots of. <sighs> exciting impressive elite news lots of just fun news in the running world this week and we've got lots to look forward to stay tuned for you sports it's gonna be epic check out the social media feeds from canadian running magazine and running magazine.ca that is it yeah that's where we are and then we'll have lots more cross country to look forward to in the form of provincial championships national championships and ncaa's you got it it's all coming up So for the week of November 4th, I'm Kate. I'm Maddie. And we'll chat with you soon.